Shove it, man! <laughs> All right, it's the leader of the Smack Pack, aka the Squad Who Shove. They make your girl in love. It's Ring of the Hawk Season 4, the show where we watch back a rest a short run with a company, 30 or less matches, and at the end we shove them a final grade to see if they can do the J.O.B. to the H.A.W.K. Bit of a mixed bag on the show so far, but Rey Mysterio and Lucha Underground was really good. But today, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge. But then we had Vito, who wasn't that great. <laughs> and I think we're in for another challenge today. But today's guy's grade isn't the only challenge we've got. Trying to stretch this video out to 10 minutes is going to make me rage. But I've got to do it because it's one of my contractually obligated Patreon requests from Imagination Wonders. If you want to make the Hawk rage, visit the page. Well, my imagination sure wonders at why someone requests this video. Anyway, and of course. Okay, okay, it's Teddy Long. I'd rather spend the day looking inside the contents of your girl's phone. Let's get this out the way straight away. Teddy Long is not a professional athlete, and I in no way ever claim him to be one. He wore several hats in the wrestling world, from manager of wrestlers to referee to on-screen authority figure. And we're not here to critique any of that today. We just want to watch his in-ring stuff and shove him a final grade to see if he can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. In order for Teddy Long to not go in the shove-it zone, he'll be relying on his charisma, his comedy and entertainment values. Because if he can't do any of that, there's literally no point in even having him on screen. And as an extra bonus point, I'm going to throw in his WCW pay-per-view match. You can thank me later with a punch to the gut. Match 1, WCW Capital Combat 1990, hair vs hair match. Precious Paul Ellering. Wow, he looks a lot more intimidating later on in his career. And he takes on Theodore R. Long, who I guess has a boxer gimmick. King is massively outsized, so he pulls Ellering's jacket over his head and desperately smacks him. He hits five punches to the back. Now it's an eyelid rake into a big wind-up punch which actually knocks Ellering to the ground. Ellering suddenly starts gritting his teeth, going nuts and choking Long. Now he looks intimidating. The ref won't let him punch Teddy Long in the face for some reason. Teddy Long scores a cheap shot and gets a two count. The comrades team debate if Long secretly has a brick in his gloves. I would love that so much, this would instantly become my favourite match of all time. Ellering blocks his next punch and pulls off the glove. He also smashes him down with a back elbow and scoop slams Teddy Long. Paul Ellering now reveals that there is indeed something in the glove and he smacks Long straight in the face. That's the three. It wasn't a brick sadly, I've no idea what it was. Teddy Long will now receive a haircut. There ain't no messing around here with this haircut, there's no chair for Long so they just shave him whilst he's knocked out. I always wondered how Long became bold, or a monk's haircut as they give him here. Actually, it's a Hulk Hogan haircut for some reason. Maybe this was some sort of shoot at Hulk Hogan. How refreshing, a comedy match that didn't stink up the building for long at all. Teddy Long put lots of energy into his performance and I was genuinely entertained. Well, as entertained as I could be for a match like this. It's a C for Theodore Long. Match 2, WWF Raw 2001. This one is happening because the McMahons are bullying The Rock and they force him to have pointless tag team partners in a handicap match. Teddy Long strongly objects to being The Rock's partner as he's a referee and not a wrestler. But I guess it's too bad. So it's a 3 on 2 handicap match, the Big Red Machine Kane teams up with known bad man Rikishi to take on Teddy Long and Jack Doan who don't get entrance music and their partner is The Rock. They look so funny striding to the ring with the Great One. I'm not sure how much you're actually going to see from the referees here. Oh no I'm wrong, Teddy Long actually starts this match as he's forced to by the referee of the match. Rikishi grabs him by his shirt as Long pleads for his life. Kishi bashes him with his ass in the corner and Teddy Long receives the stink face. This wakes Teddy Long up who scrambles for Rikishi's leg and makes the tag to The Rock. Yes, you heard that right, Teddy Long tags The Rock. Later in the match, The Rock comically distracts the referee so Teddy Long and Jack Doan can stomp down Rikishi. This actually gets a huge crowd reaction, it was pretty funny. Kane and Rikishi end up double teaming The Rock whilst the referees watch on. Do something you geeks. Kane grabs a chair for some reason, Jack Doan tries to stop Kane from using the chair. The ref is shoved down in the process and he calls for a DQ. Teddy Long has won the match. He sure doesn't look like a winner as Rikishi's ass smashes him out of the ring. No complaints about this one, it was entertaining enough. I bet Vince McMahon was very entertained. It's a D from the Hawk. The next match is happening because Stone Cold, the general manager, caught Teddy Long interfering in his client Jazz's match. Stone Cold and Long argue for at least five minutes about whether or not Teddy Long is a wrestler. Why, he's clearly not, look at him. He'd probably be world champion nowadays, wouldn't he? Match 3, Insurrection 2003, 6 man tag. They take on the Dudley Boys, Bubba, Devon and Spike. Wow, imagine waiting for the WWF to finally come to the UK and this is the match you're treated to. Nowinski and Mac are also partners who don't get on. 
So it looks like Teddy Long is screwed. Teddy actually gets tagged in completely voluntarily by Rodney Mack. Mack has just killed Spike and think the Dudley boys spend the match making threats at Teddy Long. His face is pretty funny, his nappy's so full of turd at this point that he can barely move. The Dudleys eventually take out Mack and Nowinski and Long is the only opponent left standing. Bubba calls for the tables, but Nowinski temporarily saves Teddy Long. Later, Rodney Mack thinks he has to match one with a power slam and he tags Long in to make the pin, but he only gets a two count. Long, after insinuating the whole match that Teddy Long would be going through the table, he doesn't. So it's a complete waste of time, isn't it? Bitch! Match 4, Survivor Series 2005. Oh, I'm having more flashbacks. More like smackbacks. I hate the upcoming match with a passion. This one's basically happening because Smackdown and Raw are feuding. There are two managers of the companies and they're both feuding too. The leader of the Grey Crew and also Raw at this point versus Theodore Long, the leader of Smackdown, with random, irrelevant, forgettable authority figure Palmer Cannon. This match is just completely insufferable. The bell rings and they argue for a minute. Bischoff misses a punch and Long dances around the ring. Eric wants to smack his skull in with a karate kick. There's more dancing than wrestling in this match. Palmer Cannon distracts his own guy and the referee on the ring apron. Bischoff uses that as a chance to do a sneak attack and he chokes out Teddy Long with a belt and he also karate kicks Palmer Cannon off the apron. That guy looks like the blonde just for men guy. Bischoff chokes Long as a loud, boring chant starts in the crowd. Teddy Long tries a punch but only catches air which gives Bischoff the chance to put on a sleeper. He's cranking on Long's tiny pencil net but unfortunately Long refuses to tap out. Or even better, pass out. Teddy hits him with his own shoe to get him off. Bischoff starts gritting his teeth and turning red. There's an ugly headlock now, which looks like two little kids fighting in the playground. Bischoff jabs Teddy Long in the throat as the boos become deafening. Then the boogeyman's music hits, and just like last time I said this, I have never been so happy to see the boogeyman. The boogeyman chokes Bischoff whilst gurning out. He hits a pump handle slam to a mixture of boos and silence. I guess they thought people would react better to Bischoff getting killed. Teddy Long makes the pin. A comedy match done the wrong way. It went on for ages, and then they had to have a bloody dance-off to make it last even longer. I hate everyone involved with this match. It's an S. Bitch! Well, that match was so poorly received that Long is punished for his performance, and he doesn't get to treat us to another wrestling masterpiece for an entire five years. Match 5, SmackDown. This one's happening because Teddy Long is being forced to by Mr. McMahon, and if he doesn't, he's fired. Drew McDonald. I'm almost falling asleep here, and it's not going to get any better. And he takes on Theodore Long. He doesn't come to the ring though as he's scared, or possibly drifted off somewhere. Long does eventually make his way out, and he seems to have been doing nothing but eating for the last five years. They keep saying how scared Teddy Long looks. He really doesn't look that scared. Some geeks are marched out to ensure that nobody interferes in this match. It's really dragging already. McDonald begs for Long to smack him one. It feels like this segment has run for 10 minutes at this point. Drew McDonald demands Teddy Long get on his knees whilst Long looks like he's on the verge of tears. McDonald says he needs to do this to pay his family. <laughs> I'm slightly concerned where this is about to go. McDonald demands that Long calls him the chosen one. <laughs> A wild slap nut sort of appears. McDonald is demanding that Long lays down now. Tears come out of his eyes as he crawls around the ring like a diseased Dalmatian. Drew McDonald calls him pathetic and finally the bell rings. He places one foot on Long and the ref counts three. Thank God that's over. Teddy Long walks around the ring crying. McDonald starts looking at his ass for some reason. I guess he isn't done. He wants to hit a DDT on Teddy Long but Kofi Kingston makes the save. A damn shame. Matt Hardy also tried to fight McIntyre but the black shirt security stop him. I've got to admit, this was pretty good acting from Teddy Long and he really did look humiliated. Percy the Hawk could never bow down to another man. It went on way too long though, but that isn't Long's fault. The only real downside I can critique him on is I wanted him to take that DDT. I give it a C. Well, that match was deemed so highly entertaining that we were immediately given another Teddy Long match two years later. Match 6, Smackdown, final match. <sighs> Praise the Lord. This one's happening because the managers of Smackdown and Raw are feuding as usual. It's John Laurinaitis with David Otonga versus Teddy Long with Exana. For some reason, they do an in-ring announcement like this is some sort of prize fight. If Teddy Long wins this match, Exana will have to face Kane in a cage match tonight. Possibly one of the strangest match stipulations of all time. I guess he's screwed either way. John Laurinaitis tells Teddy that he needs to do the right thing and lose this match. Teddy Long starts doing some soul searching. He searches and searches and eventually drifts off and then he decides to do some more searching. 
Kane arrives to help him find the right answer. Randy Orton springs out of nowhere and hits an RKO on Kane. John Laurinaitis is distracted by all of this and Teddy Long rolls him up for the free. Now you might think this is unwise because Xana is going to be killed by Kane in a cage now, but apparently Kane is dead and Xana does not have to face him because of this. <sighs> it's hard to put my thoughts into words after watching that one. I Bitch. guess it was a completely fitting way for Teddy Long to go out as he did absolutely nothing, just like his other matches. His first match was his best match. How do you be around wrestlers for decades and not improve? He should be fired. An absolute embarrassment to the sport of professional wrestling. Teddy Long has actually achieved something here though. I believe it's the first time a Ring of the Hawk competitor has hit zero wrestling moves in a run. However, I do have to praise his ability to look miserable though. At least he knows how I feel after having to watch that garbage back. So no, Teddy Long can't have a place on the Ring of the Hawk roster as a wrestler. He can have a big fat S. But if we're grading him as a little bitch, then I'd say yes. It still probably wasn't as bad as Vito though. At least it was shorter and Teddy Long can act better. <sighs> Are we up to 10 minutes yet? I don't know. Um, Baruch still exists. We've been trying to get him a visa to the UK, which has proved problematic. He's very hopeful that this new method we're trying now is going to work. We haven't given up hope yet. AEW weekly reviews of Dynamite are coming up soon on the lead up to the Wembley shows, which the Hawk will be in attendance for. I'm really looking forward to it. I've booked my train and everything. I've been really organised about this. So that's going to be an additional weekly video. So if you don't like AEW, don't worry. I won't disrupt my normal schedule over it. They're also holding a special dogfighting tournament before the next Impact Wrestling show. So check that out. In other news, I went shopping in Asda the other day. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're done. And if you don't agree with that, I'll hit you with a stone cold stun.